Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm King Sway, and welcome back to King Sway Entertainment. Today we have three signs someone can fight by the channel Fight Science. Uh, this is kind of an old one; it's a few months old, but I wanted to do this because uh, for those of you that come into my job, I want uh, I want your honest feedback on if any of these signs apply to me when you see me when I'm at my my bouncing job. So here we go. All right, you're in an argument with a stranger. How do you know that? That guy isn't a trained fighter. Keep watching and I'll give you three signs that See. you sh should look out for. The first... See, one thing is, how calm is he? I'm going to be honest with you. People that know they can fight, they don't go, they, they, they ain't rah, rah, rah. They, they, they don't try to cow you. They don't try to be in your face and try to shout you down because they don't need to. People that know they can fight, they're going to talk to you normally. Even when you do something, they're going to laugh at you. Because what are you going to do? Fight me? And I'm going to be honest. I have this attitude. I'm going to put it like that. Uh, excuse me. And I apply that to my everyday life. Because what are you going to do? Fight me? I'm about 200 pounds. So I'm... I'm, I'm uh, Last, I was like, I'm like 185. I bench over 225. I'm a retired fighter. My, I, on top of being a retired fighter, uh, I bounce for a living. So, I'm pretty confident in my combat skills. On top of that, I've been the head bouncer at my current job for over two years. So, I'm pretty confident in my combat skills. So, what I feel and my, the pop that, that's a lot of that shit is posture. Like you, how mad do you get? How mad do you get about something? How how fast are you trying to intimidate the other person? Are your hands at your sides? Are you trying to turn into try and square off? Are you trying to get like up in the person's face? Because if you you're the person trying to come from here to here and you're this person, that's a bad idea. That's showing me you can't fight. Or you're because you're trying. Chances are you're trying to look for a sucker punch. So, let's see if this agrees with anything that I've been saying. Because what I I laugh at you. Because again, what do you want to do? Fight me? I know I can fight, and I know I have knockout power. And a lot of people, what I've seen in my personal experience, a lot of people, like the guy that they show. I was trying to stop it there. The guy where the one dude was like, that's the guy that can't fight. The guy that was laughing with the hat backwards, and he's the dude that'll one, one, two, and lay you out. Sign behavior, how they behave, and this is everything from how calm they are, how they stand, where they put their hands, whether they target scan. All of these things are relevant. The main thing to look out for is stance and position. Does the guy stand off to your side? Does he have his hands down? Does he have his hands up? Is he relaxed in his posture? What was I just? <laughs> What was I just telling you about being loud and trying to intimidate? What was that? Hey, I just let you out. I don't want to hear it. You can hear my dog in the background. Well, but again, what was I just telling you about being loud and trying to intimidate? Yeah, like your are the Natural reaction, I might jump back, but that's just a, so you can't punch me in the face. Natural defensive reaction. And then I might come back and punch you in yours. That's happened. Uh, story time. Ooh, Sable. Uh, there was a co-worker of mine, a friend of mine, one of her good friends died. And this was on a Wednesday. The next Thursday night when I was bouncing, this was years ago, his brother came in. I didn't know anything about, I didn't, I didn't know anything about the dynamic. But the brother, I was, I want to say about 20, almost 20 pounds lighter than what I am now. But I still benched over 200 then. Uh, his brother came in and was just being a, a general asshole. He did that. He he did. He was like, yeah. Ugh. And when he found out he couldn't intimidate me, like I wasn't moving, he sucker punched me. So when my head snapped back, I'm like, bitch. And I popped up and I hit him with a one-two combination. And when his head snapped back, he was like, oh, shit. And it took on a fight out of him. They still, they, I don't know if they still got that on camera or, or, or something, but 
the the owner he laughed at that when he saw it. he was like oh shit is he smiling even these are all behaviors that give you some idea whether the person's confident but potentially trained as well people will target scan before they strike they'll look at your nose they'll look at your jaw they'll look at your belly what they're doing is they're lining up their shot a well-trained fighter doesn't need to target scan they know exactly where your jaw is your nose is or your throat is if he's got his hands down he's rarely target scanning he's already lined you up for that shot yep. worse yet if he's standing in a stance with his hands down within striking range, there is a good. What he means is this. When I'm talking to you and I, like I, I, I'm trying to get the people that uh, that come to my job involved. It's this. But when you start the, uh, I feel as though you might do something stupid. I can't. I'm sitting. Obviously, I'm sitting on the couch, but I turn to the side. But I keep my hands down because I'm lining up. I'm lining up that shot. My hands are down. I'm trying to be non-threatening. But the first chance you give me, whop! Chance that he's going to throw that strike. Now you could say train fighter will have his hands up all the time. He knows what he's doing. But I'd put my money on a... that a well-trained, confident fighter would not only invade your personal space, but will be comfortable intimidating you with their body language. Threat is going to ooze from them. Number two, movement in. Now, see the thing about it is, a confident person knows they're dangerous, or. Uh, because if you pay attention to somebody's build, the muscular, their, their muscle structure, their muscular, their, their, their physique, and how they walk, and not just how they walk, their attitude towards things, you can tell how confident they feel in their combat skills and whether or not they've got any kind of physical training even to help them with that. Sometimes it's just... I don't want to say bodybuilding. Sometimes it's just uh, weightlifting. But what do you do to get stronger? You lift weights. Now, my workouts are designed for maximum efficiency when damaging. Uh, I take weights and when we do uh, dumbbell presses, keep them here. Well, you got to imagine I'm laying back, but keep them here. And when you press up, you press like this, like you're punching because when you that's one and it's two so so all that gets worked so it's it's you get stronger also uh take a stance and have the key you know what let's just get back i'm, I'm sitting there i'm giving you yeah indicators now guys that can fight well tend not to be flat-footed they have a sense of agility and movement and, and timing and this is why the second thing to look out for would be movement indicators how the person moves how many clumsy fighters do you ever see? It's quite Next rare, on. isn't it? You don't see people generally tripping over their feet when they go to throw a punch. That's not a well-trained fighter. In no. Fact, that's not even a fighter. Actually, I don't know what you'd call that. The point being is that a someone that can himself. fight will be well-coordinated. They'll move through the environment in a very easy Flow. I like the way he's moving his shoulders clunky. back because yes, I do that. you can say that they have a confident swagger, but that's not what I'm really talking about. That There's or you, about their uh, sense I do, and I shake my arms out like this. When they walk, it's very smooth. A trained fighter would always rely on timing. Speed's important, but timing is a completely different issue. And guys that don't load up on punches, that time their movements, time their strikes, you've got to be careful with a guy that has his hands down and that's in striking range. Because a well-trained fighter won't give a shoulder indication that he's going to strike. The hands will travel quite quickly. He may even be more deceptive. Well, these guys are just going to move differently. They're not going to have that nervous bouncing around. In fact, you'll probably find that this these guys are going to be a lot calmer. So the third sign, the physical that? signs. Anyone who's ever worked out or been around trained fighters will know these signs well. Cauliflower ears, broken nose, scuffed knuckles tend to give it away, right? But what's more relevant is a lopsided posture. And I'm not talking about that guy that walks in a tilt. Now, if you look at your typical orthodox boxer, someone that stands in an orthodox stance, you'll notice that one side, typically the right side, the trapeze in itself tends to be a little bit bigger. The right shoulder often tends to be slightly higher. It's a subtle variation, but if you look at a lot of fighters, you'll see it because all of the striking, especially the heavy striking, 
tends to come off one side of the body. So sometimes it gives you a little bit of an imbalance. So if the guy's got a tight tap out t-shirt on, tap out t-shirt gives it away by the way, you might actually get to see the imbalance. I'm gonna say no, the tap out t-shirt does not give it away for the simple fact that I've seen a lot of posers with tap out t-shirts. I've seen a lot of posers with uh, jujitsu gear and, and stuff like that. I've, I've seen it in, in my years. And I've come across many a dude that'll sit there and be like, yeah, you know, I used to box. Actually, uh, quite recently, I split a guy's head open. And before that, he was talking about, I'm two-time golden gloves. What's going on? What's good? What's cracking? And I'm sitting there like, bro, I promise you, I don't care. I didn't say that out loud, but my, my attitude did. Like, that didn't put me off. Okay, well, this guy's a boxer. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am more of a kickboxer. I don't. I do full round MMA, but I'm like I keep telling people, grappling is not my strong suit. I like to stand and strike. So you box, I kickbox. What's good? But you you always like certain things like that. People do that for conversation pieces. What I mean by that is so they can talk about how great they are. Oh, yeah, you know, I, I do this. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've come across it dozens upon dozens of times in, in, my, in my years. In the shoulder. Having said that, you might think you're checking him out. Short hair is another indicator. Now, I'm not saying this is an absolute fact. Guys with long hair can be trained fighters, but the majority of fighters actually have short hair. Long but hair has it. its disadvantages when you're fighting. Not only can people pull it, but it simply gets in the way. And this is often why trained fighters have no hair. Now, when you're looking at these physical indicators, you can't just take one factor. You actually take a cluster of them together to give you some sort of assessment of what's going on. So if the guy's got callous knuckles, broken nose, cauliflower ears, stocky neck, slightly lobsided shoulder, and short hair, oh, oh, although it's scars. stereotypical, it could be a high indicator <laughs> that the guy knows how to fight. Visual appearance in itself isn't a high indicator that the guy can fight. Even if you've got a high cluster analysis of all of these factors coinciding with each other the fact is that these observations on their own aren't a reliable indicator to tell you whether this guy is a trained fighter now to understand these signs you have to look at them as a cluster of behavior not individual factors the more of these indicators that pop up together the higher the likelihood that that person Lay can down. fight so what's the takeaway well, if you want to spot signs that someone can fight, there's a number of factors that you have to take into account. It's not simply what they look like, it's how they move and also how they behave. And all of these ideas put together gives you some indication and some understanding whether this guy can fight or not fight. Of course, there's the obvious physical signs that the guy can fight. Conditioned hands, toughened face, scars around his eyes. All of these observations give you a physical telltale sign, but it doesn't necessarily tell you whether the guy can fight. I have so a scar me, here. If I to know whether the guy can fight and it's basically down to their movement on my eyelid, because you my can eyelid see how people it. move if someone's very clunky and flat-footed very stiff in their movement you can generally tell that they can't fight of course they're dangerous everybody's got a puncher's chance of knocking you out I was about that's to say a that. fact and then there's the caveat how they behave are they confident enough to stand in front of you and face off for a fight are they emotional or unemotional these are all factors that you should take into consideration how emotional is this person in front of you if the bad guy is very calm then he's a danger to you and yes someone can go off in a rage and be a handful but the guy that actually is confident and can fight he's the quiet one and the one to was watch saying that the Little difference dog between these two barks, but it's a dog that looks at you and then bites you without indication is a danger. Thanks for watching. Right, are we gonna clip this? So that was a fun little video. Uh we're gonna end it on here. Four dangers of ordinary people. Top five mistakes. I think I might cover more from um this channel. Uh, but for now, we want, like I said, we're going to end it here. Hit the like if you like what you saw and you're new to the channel. Even if you're not new to the channel and you're not uh, subscribed, hit the like and subscribe button. Hit the notification button and the bell. I try to do upload dumps uh, two times a week. And, and I try to do like between four and six to seven videos a week. 
And obviously, this will be one of them. Down in the description below will be links to the books that I have on Amazon, as well as uh, my Etsy shop. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me. In the meantime, between time, I'm always with these peace signs. I'm your main man, King Sway. And I'm catch you in the next one.